Okay, welcome to Camp Vargas. Let's get in. Chapter 1. No ifs, ands, or buts. Lecture hall. I'm going to start by taking roll. Each representative should speak up when I call your club. Is the equestrian club here? Naturally. All members present and accounted for. Next up, the track club. Here. And the basketball club? Present. Which leaves the spell drive club. Leona? Hello, spell drive club. Are they absent? We're here, the whole club's here, sir. Very good. A full house, as it were. <sighs> that was close. The last thing we need is people accusing us of not having any team spirit or something. You really went and dozed off before the meeting even began, Leona? Talk about audacity. And he's still asleep. Guess talking to him isn't gonna wake him up. Now, on to the topic at hand. I suppose I should begin by explaining why I summoned you all here. I realize this is short notice, but next week you'll all be going to a camp. In the mountains, let's say. It's called Camp Vargas. As the name implies, it's a three-day training camp overseen by our very own Coach Vargas. All athletic club members are expected to attend. If you would all quiet down, Coach Vargas will elucidate. The floor is yours, Coach. Right. Okay, here's the deal. Night Raven College is an athletic powerhouse, and we've been rocketing up the ranks in our division. Which is to be expected with me at the helm. But why stop, dear, when I could give you even more opportunities to grow? That's where Camp Vargas comes in. You'll spend three days in the great outdoors, testing your mettle against speci several special challenges I've cooked up. They've all been specially designed to test you all your limits. And that's the point. Anyone who surmounts these challenges will be well on their way to becoming a strapping stud like me. I'd rather not, but okay. Now, obviously, getting to my level is no mean feat. I figured you could all you do with some extra motivation, so the head mage has agreed to provide an incentive. Indeed, I will purchase any one thing for any club that completes all of your challenges. Anything? Did you just say anything? Ugh, no, I didn't mean anything. It was a poor choice of words. Please, banish the sword from your minds. Generosity has its limits, of course. If a club were to ask for a second sports field, for example, that would naturally be out of the question. I ask you to limit your request to equipment for use of your club activities. Oh, boo. Hmm, a piece of equipment. Hmm. Didn't a spell drive disc polisher go on the market recently? They're so expensive. Only pro teams can afford them, and they definitely count as equipment. We could ask for one of those. No matter how bad Coach Vargas gets, he can't be more demanding than Vil. Maybe it'd actually be worth going for it. Oh, and any club that fails to complete all their challenges will be disbanded. Yikes! Talk about carrot and stick. Wait, what? Relax, you're all entirely doable. If you apply yourselves. Just use those muscles you've been building. Don't disappoint me now. Expanded? Not that I haven't been taking this seriously, but does that add more weight to the situation? There's actually a more concerning matter, Silver. If we take part in this training camp, we'll have to leave Malius for three whole days! Riddle, if any of us were to be absent, he'd be unexcused, of course. The head mage said everyone was to attend. Rules are meant to be followed. But we can't! Training and challenges are a huge pain, but the camping part sounds kind of fun. That means we get to do cool stuff, like make a campfire and roast marshmallows, right? Well, are you serious, Krabby? That's what camping is on land? 
It's not just a boring trip to go gaze at anglerfish lights and stuff. This sounds rad. Are you talking about some stars? Did you two miss the part where they might shut down our club? Not a shred of urgency between you. I've taken my siblings out camping in the woods a few times back home. We slept in tents and everything. Coach Vargas was right about the whole great outdoors thing. We learned a lot from that experience. You know, it's oddly convincing when you say it, Jack. But camping's just sleeping outside, right? Is that really all it takes to improve yourself? Pipe down! Camp Vargas is gonna make you harder, better, faster, and stronger than ever before. No ifs, ands, or buts. And there we have it, chapter title. Man, that was loud. Hey, Ruggy, what's with the human bullhorn? Oh boy, you picked the wrong time to wake up, Leona. Coach Vargas is ranting. Just please keep your mouth shut. Excuse me? I swear you kids don't know how good you have it. Now, now, coach. They'll change their tune once they experience your camp for themselves, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Next week can't come soon enough. Okay, boys, I'm gonna hand out a camp over you and schedule now. Make sure you actually read it. Chapter 2 To Camping Perfection Sitting Up Camp Camp Vargas Day 1 Morning The Mirror Chamber Are all Equestrian Club members present? No, actually. Sebek isn't here yet. We were supposed to leave the dorm together, but he insisted on guarding Malius up to the last possible second. Hmm? Ah, there he is. And he's all dressed and ready to go. What's with that smug look on your face? Roughing it outdoors shouldn't be any trouble for you, given your Bri Valley upbringing. The Equestrian Club is in good hands. So it may have been an offhand remark, I shall never forget those words my leech spoke of me. Oh, okay, so Malius gave you some encouragement, that's why you're so smug. <laughs> Watch me, my liege. I, Sebek, do solemnly swear. I shall lead these humans and guide the Equestrian Club to camping perfection. I will meet your lofty expectations and do justice to my role as your guardian. Ah, <sighs> aren't you the passionate one? Oh, Leona's dressed and ready to go as well. Ambitious. <laughs> Why am I here again? It wouldn't be the end of the world if one of us was absent. Reggie? Oh, dressed and ready to go as well. Easy. Please, Leona, don't even start. We're all supposed to attend. I bet they'd abolish any club that had a member skip out. Another outfit. Oh, Floyd. Morning, sea snake. Crabby. What's up with the outfit? Pretty sweet, right? I bought especially for camping. I've been digging this brand lately. Their clothes are real easy to move in and they don't tear. Hey, sea lions got on design duds too. And I also recognize the brand Shark Suckers wearing. You have some interesting nicknames. You guys really went for the extra nautical ma for this. <laughs> Thanks, Floyd. You're looking sharp too. This was just a little something I picked up for myself when I went shopping for Leona's outfit. Yeah, it was my money. You owe me for that, by the way. Best be ready to work hard enough for the both of us at this training camp. You bet I am. Besides, you would have demanded that anyway, whether I dipped into your pocket change or not. Yep, that's, that's pretty much your life, Ruggy. <laughs> your down jacket will avail you to naught in the mountains once the brambles tear it asunder. If you're at all serious about camping, you'd be better served by protective gear like mine. 
My rainwear is durable, washable, breezeable, and personally endorsed by Lelia himself. Oh no. <laughs> Look at you, Mr. Outdoorsman. If you were that scared of the mountains, it'd be much easier to just hide in your tent the whole time. How dare you! Hey, Sebek. Aren't you missing something with all that predictive gear? What about your PE uniform? Same goes for Ruggy, Leona, and Floyd. You guys are kind of sticking out, you know. Uh, yeah. Got a problem with that? I wear what I want. No, not at all. I was just concerned, is all. Our instructions said to wear clothes that are easy to move in. Well, I guess... I guess some of them fit the mark? Yeah, but they didn't say anything about PE uniforms. This is what I think is easy to move in. Huh. It really is. <laughs> I interpreted our instructions in much the same manner. In fact, Coach Vargas hasn't raised a single objection with any of us. QED. If anything, I was expecting more people to show up looking like us. We're all gonna be in the mountains for three days. Our PE uniforms have no insulation and they won't stand up against the elements. Oh no. Oh no. I feel so bad for the rest of you guys. You've got a point, dear. I hadn't really thought that far ahead. Well, of course. The instructions didn't specify PE clothes. Very astute observation, Sebek. <laughs> you clearly need to work on your attention to detail if you missed that. Looks like everybody's here. Alright, boys. You ready for a trip to the mine? The mine? Your reaction is the same as mine. Oh, Dark Mirror, guide us to the mine. This was not where I expected the camp to be, but all right. To the mine. The door is fine. Silent Woods. The last time we were here was in the prologue, so it's been a while. So when the hit mage said in the mountains, he meant a mine? I can't believe we're back here again. Oh uh, yeah, have you guys been here before? Yes, we came here once with Grim and Anne. Oh, so we're not actually in this event. Okay, that explains why it's not so popular. Oh wait, or maybe it's just because not many people are outdoorsy persons. You guys got some weird hobbies, running around an abandoned mine. Are you mountain super fans like Jade? When I told him we were going camping, he whined non-stop about how the Mountain Lovers Club should totally count as a sports club. <laughs> you guys ought to take him with you next time you go mountain climbing. Uh, I don't know, man. I kind of rather not. <laughs> oh yeah, because he's super sus. That makes sense. Besides, Juice wouldn't be able to handle it. You wouldn't believe how much he was shaking his boots last time we were here. <laughs> I was not shaking. And Grim and Anne were way more scared. Okay, I'll give you that. Still makes me laugh every time I remember Grim cowering like that. Hey! Wait, are we in this? Is you? Is you in this? Huh? Did you guys hear a strangely familiar voice, or was it just me? Someone's coming our way. Took you all long enough. I've been waiting here for ages. Okay, so it seems like we're in here thanks to Crowley again. Grim. <sighs> Morning, all. And Anna too. What are you two doing here? We're the record keepers. Duh. So what? They're here at my behest, as imagined. I've tossed them with log keeping and capturing your efforts with their ghost camera for posterity. You're talking to Master Photographer Grimm and his assistant Anne. And you can bet I'll capture every last one of your embarrassing moments. Ugh, smug as ever, I see. Additionally, at Coach Vargas's request, I have spoken with the local denizens. The ghosts in the mine will assist you for the duration of the camp. 
Yeah, happy to help. Thanks for your support, Hitchmage. Think nothing of it. It's the least I could do. What was my infinite generosity? <sighs> those ghosts look awfully familiar. Yeah, are those the ones that chased us during the prologue? <laughs> Alright, everyone's here and roaring to go. Camp Vargas is officially in session. But before we get to the challenges, I've got a job for you guys. Oh, who do we get? Is it Leona? The club guys can handle this camping stuff without me, and if they can't, they deserve what's coming to them. Should be easy enough. I am going to clear the story. Chapter 3 Brains and Brawn Only Dwarf Spine, Silent Woods Camp Vargas is officially in session! But before we get to the challenges, I've got a job for you guys. Pitching tents! Man, we gotta sit up on tents. What a lousy way to kick off our trip. Oh well, we're just banging up with a little magic and call it a day. Let's get this over with. Not so fast! I'm confiscating all of your magic pens and smartphones. I expect you to solve problems with your brain and brawn only. Did you hear that, Jack? No smartphones. He's taking one of our most valuable tools, oh I feel you deuce. Losing our magical pins is even worse, that pretty much bars us from using magic. Wait, but can't you still use it without a magical pin? Wait, what? Oh yeah, blot! Um... A little bit shouldn't be too bad, right? Exactly. As you know, Blot is a, generous, is a dangerous and highly toxic substance that generates once you use magic. Normally, your blot gets absorbed into the mage stones of your magical pins. But without those stones, using magic will cause blot to accumulate directly in your body. Even minor cantrips can take a heavy toll, let alone signature spells. Yikes! So basically we can't use magic at all! A test of brawn without any magical assistance? That's what that's about what I'd expect from Coach Vargas. Then I have every confidence in my ability to excel beyond all others. Yeah, I'm quite comfortable with physical competitions myself. I'll hold on to your magical pins and smartphones. And rest assured, I shall return them to you once Camp Vargas is over. Alright. Let's head over to the campsite where you'll be pitching your tents. Keep up and stay together. Okay, but at least hopefully you give us a, man a manual for how we set up the tents. I shall return to the school then. I'll see you all on the last day of camp. Give it the old co college try. Doors mine campsite. Well, sir, get a look at this giant field and all the trees! You'll be camping here for the next three days. The tents hold one to two people and we've got plenty of them. Each club can take as many as they need. You have one hour to set them up. That might sound like a lot of time, but make sure you don't get cocky. A proper campsite is crucial to protecting yourselves and resting your weary muscles. Will you seek the shelter of trees as a defense from sudden wind? Or will you sit up on flat ground so you can rest comfortably? Each club should discuss the options amongst themselves. And feel free to grab a toolbox if you need one. We've got several. Okay, so the best way to do that is generally to set up a camp like on a slight slope. And... Okay, or maybe they've got like different ones. But from Siri, the best way to set up camp is to... Oh yeah, never mind. Your hour begins now. And also like dig like a little moat around the tent once it's over. Just in case any water floods the tent. Yeah, let's stop by each club. The Equestrian Club. 
This will be interesting. Coach Vargas mentioned protecting ourselves, but I failed to see what's so dangerous about these woods. It's difficult to say offhand, but one can never become too careful. I say we pitch our tents in one place, so that we'll be ready to face any eventuality together. Understood. The question is where? You know, I saw a creek on the way here. Then it may behoove us to sit up where there's easy access to fresh water. Track club. I'm getting Hunger Games vibes, but like, but without the killing. Looks like the Christian Club's gone over by the creek. Should we follow their example and set up up tents by the water too? Water levels can rise. We don't want to camp too close to a stream. We don't have... We don't all have to set up in the same spot. But I think it'd be good if we were under some trees, so we'd be shielded from rain and wind. Ah, good point. Thanks for the suggestion. Hey, look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do or anything. Do what you want. Jeez, can't take a compliment. Okay, then let's follow Jack's advice. Yeah, good call. They're all moving out. Let's see how big of a mess they get themselves into. Chapter 4. The most fun possible. Setting up camp. Dorf's mine campsite. Now, I actually did a bit of research and... You're supposed to find a shady area that's relatively flat and with some pine needles on the floor and some cushions. And also, stay away from hills because otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna get soaked if it starts raining. Oh, and also, Jack was right. Stay away from the water and the rivers as well. 30 minutes to go. Track club. Hmm, ensure the rain fly is right side out, then pull it over the inner tent. I'll have to be careful when I'm actually sitting this thing up. All these steps are kind of confusing. Every time I pitch this tent, it ends up tilted 10 degrees to the right. I can't stand that it. it's not even. Dude, it's 10 degrees! Sure, it isn't easy doing this by yourself. I've always had my family's help before. Hey, Deuce, Jack, I know you two want to set up the tents just right, but make sure to keep an eye on the time, okay? Yeah, you're right. So, Jack, want to work together? Make it a team effort? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Spell Drive Club. So, Leona, what's the, wor what's the verdict on the tent Epo and I set up? Is it comfy enough for you? I'd still prefer the campus greenhouse, but this is tolerable, I guess. Great. <laughs> Good thing you have a pair of underclassmen who look out for their elders, hmm? Speaking of, I gotta say, Epo, you're pretty good at this. Thanks for chipping in. Now, let's get our own tent set up. Okay. Well, come on me, surprise. The track club and the spell drive club ain't having any trouble. Equestrian Club, how are you guys doing? Alright, now we just have to tighten the ropes at the four corners and adjust the tense balance. Sebek, could you tighten the corner opposite of mine? Certainly. Ugh! Hey, don't pull so hard! Ugh, always intense. Couldn't you give it more oomph, Riddle? Oh yeah, actually, Riddle, why don't you give it more oomph? <laughs> I'm giving plenty of oomph, thank you very much. Talk about brute strengths. <laughs> Riddle looks like he's saying tug of war and losing. This is way different than him calling the shots with a hat slap you. Fifteen minutes ago. Basketball club. Oh no. Mm, nah, this yellow tint's not doing it for me. I'm gonna go grab a red one. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Lloyd, you and your unpredictable personality. You're seriously about to redo your entire tent? Uh, yeah. If I'm camping, I want to have the most fun possible. 
You could stand to pick a brighter tint yourself, sea snake. Beige is so vanilla. And it's also not the warmest tint at night. Am I right or what, Krabby? Nope, don't drag me into any of this. <sighs> I question Wizard Basketball Club can last the whole three days out here. Jamil's always getting run through the ringer by his dorm, and his club ain't looking much different. Some of these clubs are doing a real shabby job with their tents. Are they gonna be okay? Oh yeah, now that I think about it, Jamil is finally able to take a break from Kaleem. And now he has to deal with these guys. And time! A few tents look a little lumpy, but aside from that, you've all managed to set them up. Oh, Club's Pass. Barely. Hm. <laughs> the Equestrian Club's Pass is well deserved, but I wonder if Coach Vargas isn't going too easy on the others. So far, so good for the Spell Drive Club, I think. Whew, the Track Club managed to assemble all our tents in time. <sighs> the Basketball Club made it, right at the buzzer. Now that you're all warmed up, it's time to go over what you'll be doing at this camp. So listen up and listen good. Chapter 5 Vargas Badges Sitting Up Camp Dorf's Mine Campsite As you progress through the challenges, you'll earn Vargas Badges. When you finish a challenge, report to a ghost. They'll verify you completed it and give you a badge. You'll have seven challenges to do over these three days. If you earn all seven Vargas badges, then your club passes and wins this prize. And if you don't get all seven, well, you don't need me to spell it out, right? The club will be kaput. Whatever, we'll just do all the stupid challenges. So you're all clear on how this works? Great, then I'll go over your three challenges for today. First, survival. You'll need a safe environment to get through the next three days, and it's your job to make one. You are to gather firewood from the forest, build a campfire, and light it. That's camping 101 right there. Wild animals tend to steer clear when there's a fire going. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Second, sustenance. Sustenance. Ah. <laughs> sustenance. You gotta learn about the ecosystem around the mine and scrounge up some grub. You'll catch fish from the lake, then clean and cook them. Come to think of it, I haven't eaten since this morning. Third, education. Put that book learning into practice and glean some new insights. You'll be going down an unsigned tunnel in a mine and digging up a mage stone. Each mage stone must be at least one cubic centimeters and weigh at least three grams. Any fragment smaller than that will not count. The locations for each of these tasks are marked on the map you received with your instructions. You can finish them in any order with any of your club members. You can borrow fishing rods and pickaxes from me when you need them. You have until sunset to finish all three challenges and get your badges. That's it for me. Now get out there and show some hustle! Sunset's not far off, is it? Sure isn't. These areas are pretty far apart too. Time's not on our side. There aren't enough fishing rods and picks axes to go around. You gotta figure out the best order to do things. What about splitting up the members? Psst. It's not that hard. Just do all of them at once. Huh? You need rods and pickaxes for fishing and mining. So just send as many people as we have tools. Everyone else can gather firewood. That way we cover all three jobs and no one's just standing around. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. I don't know about the other clubs, but we don't have any herbivores who would need to travel in a herd, right? Yeah, you're right! Ruggie, you bounce between areas to give directions and allocate people as needed. Roger that! Eppo, you're good with all these tools, right? Stick with Ruggie and pitch in whenever someone's having trouble. Got it! That's our boss for you. Wait, Leona, what are you gonna do? Wait, did you just- did you just give all these instructions so you could slack off? <laughs> you really did. 
that's what I figured. Well, you're the boss. Come on, guys. Let's get to work. Yes, sir. The clock's ticking. Where should we start? It sinks through our options. Mm, I'm starving. Can we start at the lake? I'm hungry too. I second that motion. I have reservations about how seriously Floyd is taking this, but I agree the lake's a good starting point. We should get food while we still have enough energy. So we got a fish, got gas of firewood, and mine a mage stone. Fishing takes a lot of luck. We might want to start at the lake. If we see the fish are biting, we could reassign a part of our group and start the other tasks. Sounds good to me. Let's see what the sophomores and juniors think. My personal opinion is that we should prioritize the caves. I agree with Rido. The mine's been closed for a long time, so it's probably hard to find even small fragments of mage stones. We should get the most time-consuming task out of the way first. No objections from me! <laughs> so to be clear, Silver's argument did not persuade me. I had the same idea from the start. So it's you and your rivalry with Silver. No, really. Then we're on the same page. We most certainly are not! <laughs> Sabek. Jesus. Okay, time for us to get to work too. Wait, do we have to do this? Right, chapter one. Book two. Easy peasy. First experiences. Dwarf's mine. Forest. What's up, Spell Drive Club? Oh, hello, Grim, Anne. We came to see how things are going. If you're out here in the forest, that means you're gathering firewood to start a campfire, right? Yep. Ruggy told us to... Whatever to get. Ruggy told us whatever to get. Ruggy told us what to get. <laughs> and we just finished. Huh, you got a lot of sticks and leaves. Wouldn't that stuff burn up in seconds? You need to balance it out. That's the point. Sick, heavy branches burn for a long time, but they're much harder to start a fire with. That's why you need kindling, stuff that's easy to light, like dried twigs and pine needles. Ooh, I get ya. Yeah. I'm still not sure how we'll actually start the fire, though. Uh, there's multiple ways. Either use... Um, never mind. No matches or lighters, and we can't use magic. I'm not sure what our other options are. There's flint, that's one. There's also using the bow and arrow method, and there's also also the magnifying glass method. Oh, well, that part's easy. Let's head back to camp and I'll show you. Dwarf spine, campsite. Oh hey, you're back. You're just lying around here. I swear, you've been slacking off ever since the tents. You got a problem with me, Furball? Uh, I didn't say you nothing. So, Ruggy, how do you start a fire without matches or a lighter? First, you pick a dry patch of ground and lay out some rocks. Then, you put your kindling on top of them. Um, okay. Next, you get a rock, like the white one I found by the river, and a steel file, like this one. You brought a file from home? Are you kidding? I borrowed this from one of my toolboxes when we were setting up the tents. Anyway, when you strike the rock against the steel just right, sparks. Oh, sparks! Check it out, that leaf caught fire! There you have it. Now we'll just mine the airflow and use the fire to light bigger and bigger pieces of wood. I swear, it's all, it's not that easy. You knew exactly what kind of wood to get and how to light it. You're like a camping expert, Ruggy. <laughs> You're welcome to give me a gift as a token of your esteem. Not saying, just saying. So it's less about camping and more... Just plain survival skills. I had to pick up this stuff the hard way when I was really struggling to get by. What have you been through? Anyway, we've got our campfire. Hey, we need a ghost over here! 
Oh, I see you've lit your fire. You've completed the challenge. Here's your Vargas badge. Great, that's one down. You need your campfire for other challenges and it's essential for staying warm at night. So make sure it doesn't go out, okay? I read you loud and clear. As for the fire burning out, well, so long as it's big enough, it'll survive a breeze or two. Oh, what about other people putting it out? You sure you want to pat yourself on the back right now? Huh? <gasps> Whoa! What is that? A dryad? Fairies. What's the problem? They weren't here before, right? Yeah, they just popped out of nowhere. Where'd they even come from? Um, is she pissed? Raggy, is it just me or are they angry? Oh, I'm getting... I'm definitely getting that vibe. Was it something we did? It's definitely the wood. You started the fire, remember? Wait, what? This is my fault? But why would... No, the questions can wait. We gotta get these fairies out of here. Well, that was quick. Chapter 2. You can handle him. First experiences. Dwarf's Mind Campsite. Phew, you finally drove the fairies away. What do you think that was about? They were probably scared of the fire. How'd you figure? The mine has its own history, you know. Back when it was in use, one of the miners' campfires caused a massive forest fire. After that, the, for the fairies in the wood around here started calling the embers red flowers. They've a bored fire ever since. So they came to put it out. That's it in a nutshell. You saved me the trouble of having to explain it all. Huh. You really know your stuff. Please, we learned that in class. Well, excuse me. Anna and Ippo are first years, so I'll give them a pass, but the rest of you? How do you not know that? <laughs> Sheesh, you guys have got to know this stuff or Vargas won't let you hear the end of it. What shall we do about it, Zoe? The fairies will keep coming back as long as the campfire's going, right? Yeah. So, the owner, any chance you want to watch over the campfire? Nope. You don't need my help shooing away a few fairies. They can't be that strong, they're scared of a little fire. You guys can handle them. So that you say that, just had to ask. Okay, guess we'll have to have to, we'll have to take turns guarding the fire. The rest of you, go help out with the other challenges. Yes, sir. Let's go check up on the other clubs. Chapter 3. The Long Hole. First Experiences. Dwarf's Mine. Lakeside. Okay, our bait's hooked and ready. Time to test our lines and see what bites. Let's do it! Nothing so far. It's not that quick! That's pretty normal. You gotta be patient and sit on for the long haul. At least, that's how it was when I'd go fishing for pond smelt back home. Oh, so this is normal. Hey, look, some fish are gathering around your bait. Alright, all I need is one tiny bite. What's shaking, boys? Oh, god damn it, Grim. Ah, the fish! Ugh. Grim, you scared of our meal. <laughs> Maybe you ain't so hot at fishing. <sighs> Let's see what you've got. So far, we've got nothing. Grim, could you please keep it down? Fine, you don't have to beg. I don't know, though. Are you really gonna catch anything just waiting around? You ought to shimmy your bait a little so it looks like real fish. Here, give me one of them rods. Oh, I can just see how this goes horribly wrong. Check it out. You make it do a little dance in the water like so and... Whoops, the fish boated. What? I was just trying to help. Hey, wait a minute. Look in the lake. There's a big shadow under the water. That's got to be a fish, right? It's coming this way. That sucker could feed the whole team. Jack, we can't pass this up. 
I guess not, but isn't it a little too big? Oh no, is that the Loch Ness? Um, it's coming up to the surface. What is that? Huh? Oh, it's... What? <laughs> oh, well, this is your idea of fishing, huh? Oh, hey, it's Mackie and Sea Urchin. And what you... What you... <laughs> oh, hey, it's Mackie and Sea Urchin, and you got Seely and Little Shrimpy with you. What you doing? Floyd, what are you doing? Our challenge. What can I say? I was hungry. Sitting around with a fishing rod's a real snooze fest, so way easy to jump in and catch fish the old-fashioned way. Anyway, I was in the middle of a hunt, so I'd better get back to it. Later, gators. And there he goes! He can do that? Alright, enough distractions. This time, I'm catching something. Wait, did you jump in? Oh, wait, no. no. <laughs> For a second, I saw that you jumped in the lake as well. I think someone's through a rock. Look over there. Oh, another fairy. Fairies? I don't know what they're saying, but I recognize trash talk when I see it. I've headed up to here with all these interruptions. Come on, Jack, let's send them packing. Yeah. Chapter 4. That's the good stuff. First experiences. Dwarf's Mine, Lakeside. Now they'll leave us alone. No more interruptions. It's time to get our fish on. Hey, we got him. Seven, eight, nine, ten fish for me. I've got eight over here. I caught thirteen. I got twenty-two. Quite a catch. I thought a little fishing and cooking would be a walk in the park. But I didn't expect to tangle with fairies. That took a lot out of me. Oh ho, I see the track clips pulled in a real hole. Once you clean and cook these fish, your lakeside challenge will be complete. We've got a full selection of seasonings and cookware at the camp. Feel free to use whatever you like. Oh, that's good. I thought that they were going to eat it raw. Okay, let's head back. Actually, what are we going to make with all this fish? I sometimes help my mom in the kitchen back home, but not enough that I know how to make anything too elaborate. How about you, Jack? Same. I can't cook fancy stuff. Pond smell tastes great when you grill it fresh, so how does that smell? How does that sound? Hmm. Dwarf's mine campsite. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Totally. It's tender and flaky and perfectly seasoned. All I did was grill it with some salt. Still, I'm sure eating it with friends around a campfire makes it taste all the better. Yeah, give me some more. Um, Grim, we should probably get back to our job. Come on, just one more fishy. We'll go after that. We all know how Grim gets. I don't think anyone will mind if the record keepers take a quick breather. Come on, honey. No need to be shy. Eat up. Aw, oh, juice, thank you. So what's the plan after this, Jack? We should probably help out with the other challenges. I bet they'll need a ton of manpower in the mines. Collecting mage stones sound good to me. Chapter 5. Rudimentary in the extreme. First experiences. Dwarf's mine interior. Knock knock, guys! Ah, oh, the record keepers. Are you checking up on our progress? Yes, sirree. Why are you just standing around? Aren't you supposed to be finding a mage stone? Yes. But swinging our pickaxes at random won't turn up much. Especially since this mine's been closed for a while. So we were going over what we know about mage stones first. Do any of you know how to locate mage stones and mine them? We learned about this in class. Of course I remember it. In general terms, mage stones are gemstones that have been transformed by absorbing ambient magic power. You locate them by tracking the faint traces of magic they emit. However, doing so requires incredible focus. Typically trained professionals search for them. Since we're untrained, our detection radius is 
Tim meat is at most. Nonetheless, it's better than digging around arbitrarily. Checking every centimeter of this vast tunnel would be a fool's errand. Once we've identified a general location, we can commence digging. We'll start by using the pickaxes to chip off the wall's wizard brittle outer layer. Then we'll use hammers and chisels to remove the mage stone from its rocky encasement. That is all! Excellent overview, Isabek. You certainly paid close attention in class. <laughs> I suppose there are worse things than receiving a compliment from the head of the sophomore class. I accept your words of praise. Well, Spick, I have to hand it to you. You always do so well in class. I should take a leaf from your book. Please, Silver, if I graced you with a leaf from my book, you'd probably just fall asleep on it. Those facts are rudimentary to the extreme. I don't know about that. I don't remember any of that from class. Oh, well, we finished our review. Let's get to work and find a mage stone. Hey, you got one. Did you? I found one! <gasps> Sheesh, turn down the volume, Luya. My ears are ringing. Why are you complaining? I found a fragment. Look. That's a tiny one. It's just pure dumb luck you found it. Though it means that there might be more mage stones around this area. Nonetheless, it meets the size requirements. That takes care of our task. I wouldn't celebrate just yet. Huh, is that the cry of a sore loser I hear? Wait, something's approaching. Ready yourself. I'm always ready. Fire fairy? Fairies hold away down here. They appeared out of nowhere the moment I laid claim to this mage stone. Wait, do they want the stone? Aren't you half a fairy? I think you might be onto something. I don't understand what they're saying, but I can sense their hostility. Hmph. <laughs> Faze though they may be. Do these minuscule mind dwellers truly think themselves a match for those of us who trained in Briar Valley? I found this mage stone and I won't allow anyone to pilfer it. Silver, let us drive these fairies away. I don't see any better options. Let's chase them off before someone gets hurt. Chapter 6 That's what they get. First experiences. Dwarf's mind and Teria. Okay, so we managed to chase off the fairies unscathed. Hm. That's what they get for attempting to swipe another spoils! I expected a simple mining task, not a fairy fracas. This turned out to be quite the ordeal. Not for me, of course. After all, I've sworn to meet Malius's every expectation. I'm impressed, Sebek. Your motivation is strong as can be where Malius is concerned. Of course! That's just how great Malius is! Could you please stop yelling? This tunnel's very echoey. My ears are ringing. At any rate, we have a mage stone. Let us claim our Vargas badge. We need a ghost for that. Hehehe, <laughs> are you cold? Ah! Don't sneak up on people like that! <laughs> Sorry. Greetings, ghost. We have obtained our requisite mage stone fragment. Hmm, yep, you got one alright. Here you go, one Vargas badge for the equestrian club. Victory! So that's what the badges look like. I can now report to Melius and Lelia with my head held high. Wanna take a commemorative photo? Oh, you're rather considerate. Go on then. Fulfill your record keeping duties. There ain't a tunnel big enough for this guy's ego. I hope we get the photo at the end. Chapter 1 That's hardcore. A very short rest. Dwarf's Mine Lakeside. Here's some more fish. How many is that now? Actually, whatever. I'm done swimming. Whoa! You must have caught over 50 fish. Thanks for making the rest of us look like chumps. 
squealing in one at a time. Not to mention you caught them with your bare hands and just tossed them on land. That's hardcore. Eh, that's pretty boring to me. The fish in this lake are pathetically slow. Wait, uh, how did you manage to like change clothes that quickly? And out of your... Wait, is, is this all magic? This is confusing. Going after small fry is a waste of my time. How can I feel the thrill of the hunt if none of the fish are worth chasing? Well, hey, at least you got our lakeside challenge in the bag. Now our designated shift just needs to clean and cook them. Right, I'll handle that. We're counting on you, Jamil. Make it a meal to remember. After I snag all these fish, you better not just stick them over a fire and call it good. Okay, sure. I can make something nice. But I'll need more than just fish if you want a full-blown meal. And it will be your responsibility to gather the extra ingredients. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> you get what you wish for. I'm going back to the camp to prep these fish. Okay, we'll hit for the mines and help look for mage stones. Floyd, Ace, you're in charge of foraging for wild plants. Edible ones. Fine, I guess. This better be... Um, this better be one mouse-watering meal. Don't disappoint us now. Yes, yes, I got it. See you soon. What a great manipulator. Well, let's get to it. I'm gonna look around by the lake. You take the woods, Krabby. Okay. Hmm, I have no clue which plants are edible. I doubt I'll find much on my own. But hey, Floyd's surprisingly into this. I'm sure he'll get enough for the both of us. This is not how it works. After spending all day sitting up camp and fishing, I finally got some time to myself. Nobody will notice if I'm pretending to forage. I'll just find a nice spot to chillax. Hmm? Did something just move in the grass? Let me guess, is that grim? Whoa! Birds! Jeez, don't scare me like that. Grim would let me... Grim would never let me live it down if he saw that. And speak of the devil, that's that's actually him. More of him? Psst, fool me once, stupid birds. What's with that horror music in the background? What? Okay. That's... That's something. Um... What just happened? Hmm, I thought I heard something. Hmm. Oh well, whatever's. No! What happened to Ace? Chapter 2 The Tough Guy Act. A Very Short Rest. Camp Vargas. Day 1. Evening. Camp the Dwarf's Mine Campsite. The sun has officially set. Time's up. Let's see how you did. When I call your club, tell me how many Vargas badges you earned. Equestrian club. You've earned all three badges. Track club. We got all three too. Basketball club. Three as well. So we admittedly squeaked by. And last up, spell drive club. Three, of course. Alright, looks like you all made it through the day and achieved your objectives. But considering you were all working to the last minute, it was hardly a slam dunk. I'll be announcing the next challenges tomorrow morning. Be warned, you ain't seen nothing yet. Normally, I'd say to get plenty of rest so you can be fresh for the long day ahead, but... The forest fairies will be trying to put out your campfires all night. So make sure you keep watch till morning. Dismissed. Well, this really is like the Hunger Games. Come with me, record keepers. Huh? Where are we going? I'm staying in the cottage. You'll be setting up your tent right next to it. Okay, so we're camping away from the others. Aw oh, man, we're sleeping near Vargas. And we're gonna hike over there and rig up a tent at this hour. What a drag. No need to worry about any danger. I'll keep a watchful eye as I crush my ribs. We don't need you creeping over our shoulder. How about you give us a hand instead? 
But what about Ace? Hey Floyd, have you seen Ace? Crabby? Nope. What you asking me for? You were both tossed with gathering ingredients by the lake. But only you came back. Oh yeah, he wasn't at dinner, was he? I didn't even notice. He's probably just goofing off somewhere. Sounds fun, actually. Maybe I should join him. You still got energy after swimming around? Well, too bad. You're not skipping out on campfire, Judy. Uh, you're talking just like a zoo now, sea snake. I mean, those two are actually very similar, so that's that. I'm beat. It's like I can barely keep my eyes open. Today was more strenuous than our usual practice. Okay, let's figure out our rotation for guarding the fire so we can hit the hay. Hmm. Riddle! Speck, what's the matter? I fully expect Silver to doze off, but not you! Uh, apologies. I'm partly worn out from today, but I don't normally burn the midnight oil either. Then might I suggest you go rest in your tent? I'll stand guard over the campfire. Are you sure? You might be just as exhausted as I am. I'm fine, truly. Roughing it is nothing new to me. Would you take Silver with you, though? His blatant snoring is infuriating! Alright, come on, Silver. Hmm? Oh, did I nod off again? You did. Let's get back to our tents. Sebek can take it over from here. Everyone's tuckered out. You must be tired too, Ippo. You should get to bed. No, no, I'm wide awake. Hey, no need for the tough guy act. We're gonna be working way harder tomorrow, remember? Mm, I'll stick it out a little longer. <laughs> if you insist. You got the heart of an athlete, don't you? Sure wish you could share some of that with a certain guy who just ducked under his tent without a word. Who? Oh. <laughs> Yep. Wait, we get a POV of him? He's asleep. Chapter 3. Gonna squeeze you later. A very short rest. Camp Vargas. Day 2. Way too early. Wait, you guys didn't even alert Vargas about missing Ace? What? Dwarf's mine campsite. It's the second day already! There's no one... Ruggy? What's going on? Ah. Uh, what in tarnation? Apple! What's all that racket? And why won't it stop? No idea. It just started all of a sudden. Rise and shine, boys. Time for your next challenges. Ah. Someone's banging a pot. Was a oh a frying pan. Okay then. What time is it anyway? If the sun's not risen or shining, how can we gotta be? Good morning, everybody, and what a fine morning it is. It's, it's still dark. Man, I want to go back to sleep. Ugh, sleeping bags don't make the ground any softer. I don't feel rested at all. Sheesh, I knew you kids like muscle, but you apparently mac- apparently you like- <laughs> But you apparently lack manners too. When I say good morning, I expect a proper response. I'll flunk anyone who doesn't give me one. Well, now you're just abusing your power. Let's try this again. Good morning! Good morning, coach. Oh, this is way too early for this. Okay, here are your challenges for day two. There are three of them again. At least he doesn't force us to be positive about it. First, survival. You need to brew potions in case of emergency. Go out and find a lantern blossom. They grow in the area and are used in potions to help heal cuts and scrapes faster. Lantern blossoms. They are quite rare, if memory serves. This is already a more difficult task than anything we did yesterday. Second, sustenance. When catching your own food, you must be aware of its environment. There are giant catfish in the lake that prey on a small fish. Catch one. There's catfish in the lake? I didn't see a single one when we were fishing yesterday. I need a strategy to pull this off. 
Third, education. You'll need to utilize a more practical knowledge of mage stones today. Go back to the mine and get another stone. But this time, I want an even larger one. Your stones must be about two cubic centimeters and weigh about seven grams. What? Man, finding one yesterday was hard enough, but now we gotta go bigger. I wanna go home. Once again, you have until sunset. Day uh, day two of Camp Vargas begins now. I need to take a break after this. I say we send most of our members into the forest. Lantern blossoms are exceedingly rare. Agreed. They grow in small quantities. We'll dispatch as many people as we can. I know these challenges are pretty tough, but I'm thinking I'll start at the lake. Catching catfish is too hard for beginners. We've got the woods, the lake, and the mines. Where should we start? Why don't we split it into three groups? Freshmen have first dibs. In that case, why don't we do the one that's the toughest workout? Oh, help us in the club. You actually want to work out more? You got muscles for brains or something? You are one to torque. If you're so tired, why not take a little nap? I'll handle everything. Unlike you, I've got energy for days. Hey, I'm not tired. I'm raring to go. Digging into rock walls was pretty taxing yesterday. Let's go with the mines. <laughs> That's better. Ah, so sleepy. Hey, Sealy. Little Shrimpy. Got a sec? Eh? What's going on, you two? Have you seen Ace? He never came back to camp last night. That's a negative. And why didn't you tell Vargas? Oh, okay. Well, this is Ace we're talking about. He's probably ditching work and hanging around another club's tent. I got a message for Krabby if you see him. It's, I'm gonna squeeze you later. <laughs> Jeez. Pass it on for me, would you? Catch you on the flip side. Ay ay ay. Where's Ace got to now? Ah, the mystery we all want to know. Oh well, we're gonna be doing lots of rounds today. Maybe we'll run into him. 